the Ferrari 612 Scaglietti has for a long time now been one of the cheapest ways into Ferrari ownership, but it also promises to be one of the most practical Ferraris. Oh, and under the bonnet, yeah, it's got a V12. But in this video, we are gonna be putting those rear seats to the test. Can I fit back there comfortably? What about child seats? Then me and my daughters are gonna go and take this out for a real world family drive. And I'm gonna be comparing it to my dream car, what I crowned the dad car king, the Ferrari FF. But also, what does it compare to its peers of the time, the DB9, the Gran Turismo? Let's find out. My name's Ben, and welcome to Dad Cars. But before we check out those rear seats, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. And by elephant, I mean the size and looks of the Scaglietti. Because I think it's fair to say that throughout this car's life, the looks have always been controversial. Size-wise, it is huge. This part on my drive makes my Maserati Grand Sport look like a toy car. It's actually slightly longer and wider than a Gran Turismo even. Heck, it's the same size as a Ferrari FF, and they are massive. But looks-wise, in my opinion, ugly, this is not. I love the looks of the 612. I mean, look at it from the rear. But for me, my favorite angle on the Scaglietti has to be the side profile. Look at that gorgeous coupe design. It certainly doesn't look like you can fit two adults in the back, does it? That sharp vertical line, which is broken up by that gorgeous scallop out the side as well. And then in person, you can see a few other lovely details like the slight flare on the wheel arch there. The 19 inch alloys do look quite small on this huge car by modern standards. But when you come around to the business end, this is where things get most controversial in the looks department. And with this wide open smiling mouth and the lights kind of at certain angles looking like eyes, I've heard it said before that this looks like a whale shark from a certain Pixar film. However, when you spend time with this car in person, there are details that don't come through on screen in pictures. These wonderful raised wheel arch bulges coming down into the lights with that sharp crease on top and the point at the ends, these look like torpedoes from certain angles. But I could spend all day looking at this car. The bottom line, I think the 612 Scaglietti looks tremendous. Now let's get into those back seats and see how practical this car is. Let's have a look. So the driver's seat goes forward automatically. Right, moment of truth for headroom. I'm 5'11 with a long torso. And yes, <laughs> look at that, my head is not touching on the roof line. But what about legroom? Let's get this driver's seat back. Is it gonna squish me? Okay, so this is fascinating with the driver's seat in its preferred position. If I shuffle back ever so slightly, it's tight, but there is enough legroom for an adult. However, because I've shuffled back slightly now, my head will touch on the glass. But fear not, if I sprawl my knees out, slump down in my seat, wrap those knees around the driver's seat, and I'm very comfortable here. So I think it's safe to confirm that there is more space in the back of a Ferrari FF. However, I would still say that you can consider the 612 a four-seater and be able to fit adults in the back. Oh yes, look at that. But just like the FF, <laughs> it's such a wonderful place to sit in the back here. High quality Italian leather everywhere. Oh, this just feels so special. And I'm struggling to find any plastic. Oh, hang on. Oh, the little pop down coat hook. I guarantee once children find that, that's all you're gonna hear in your ear. <laughs> it's then pressing that button. Oh, and also look, another bit of plastic here is you've got Sweetie Wrapper bin as well. What a special, special interior, but there's something that I cannot see in the back here. I cannot see Isofix, which will limit child seat options. Let's very quickly have a look what child seats I can fit in the back. I've just made a shocking discovery. Even though it doesn't look like it, there are in fact Isofix points on the back of these seats. You have to break your finger in order to access them. Whoever was in charge at Ferrari of rear seat design in the 612 didn't get the memo about Isofix and went ahead and made the most beautiful rear seats that they could with no consideration of how to access those Isofix points. I'm pleased to confirm I was able to successfully get a belt secured rear facing infant carrier in the back with plenty of space there. 
And if you're planning on putting child seats in the back of special cars like this, make sure you get yourself a seat protector. They don't cost much. I'll put a link in the description below to the ones that I use. So to confirm, the only way to connect an Isofix child seat in the back of your 612 would be to significantly damage your lever. I also tried to fit one of my Swedish Plus tested child seats, but could only access one side of the seat runner for the tether straps. So today we will be using the same five point harness child seat that I used in the back of the Ferrari FF, along with this high back booster seat, which I would actually highly recommend for the back of the 612 as it fits the sculpted seats perfectly. This car is not equipped with a front passenger airbag deactivation switch, although reading the instruction manual, it kind of indicates that maybe this was available as an option at the time. I'd like to invite any current or previous 612 owners who use their cars with their children, hop into the comments below and any other information you have about using the 612 with children please let us know. And finally, what about the boot? Well, at 240 litres means it's bigger than a DB9s, but slightly smaller than a Gran Turismo's and the Ferrari FF. I mean, that's nearly double at 450 litres. But in fairness, look, I've got more than enough space here for my camera bag, a folding buggy, and even to go off and do a cheeky midweek family shop, taking advantage of parent and child parking, obviously. All right, girls, would you like to go for a drive in a Ferrari? Yeah. You ready? So turn it on. Do you reckon it'd be loud? Yeah. I can't hear it. Open the door. Open the door. You want to open the door? What, yeah. so you can hear it? What do you reckon? Good. <laughs> that means what do you good. think? Good, good. <laughs> That's so cute that you wanted to hear it. Right, so Pickles, you've been in a Ferrari before, haven't you? Yeah. What? And you've been in a Ferrari before. What Ferrari have you been in? A Ferrari FF. Yeah. And what did you like about the Ferrari FF? The seatbelt gave it to you. <laughs> yeah, it gave the seatbelt to me, but in this car, it doesn't need to do that because the seatbelt is part of the driver and passenger seat itself, which oh. actually I think is a really good design. I know some BMWs do it as well. Oh, yeah. Right, Gal, so do you want to hear a little bit about this car? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So this is a Ferrari 612 Scaglietti. Can you say Scaglietti? Scaglietti, like, what is <laughs> This is the first annoying thing I would say about this car, because obviously it's a robotized manual, just like the, the Grand Sport that we've got, girls. Except when you're on a slope, it doesn't have like a, like a hill stop brake that automatically stops you from rolling back. So when you're in first gear, you actually need to use the brake and the handbrake in order to do a hill start. Which I don't think in a super grand tourer that was made in the late noughties, I don't think that's acceptable. <laughs> and this is a HGTS, which means it's got a louder exhaust, which to me is essential. Honestly, the overrun, the burbles, the noise that comes from this exhaust is incredible. It's also got these alloys, but it's not the one which has got the carbon fiber brakes. It's still got the steel ones. Right, girls, we're coming up to some speed bumps here. Shall we see how this car does over some speed bumps? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, that's quite nice and comfortable, actually, isn't it? Kind of floats over the top of them. Oh, here's a big one here. Let's go slow. Oh, look at that. Easy. No problems whatsoever. <laughs> This was made between 2004 and 2011. It's got a 5.7 naturally aspirated V12. Girls, what car did we used to have that had a V12? Do you remember? Aston Martin! An Aston Martin, yeah, we did, didn't we? But this produces more power than the Aston. 540 brake horsepower, I think. And it sends all the power to those rear wheels. And as we alluded to earlier on, it's got a six speed robotized manual, Ferrari's F1 system. And it's abundantly clear that this system is more advanced than the one in my Grand Sport. The gear changes are smooth and pretty fast, really, all things considered. But you can press this button here, F1-S, and then it will make the gear shifts even faster. There is also a sport button here on the steering wheel, which I believe will put the F1S system on, but also if you see the sport light on the bottom left-hand corner of the dash, that indicates that the dampers are in a firmer setting. 
But what we'll do, look, is we'll just keep everything in nice comfort mode. It's raining outside, got two little pickles in the back. I don't think we need to really be pushing it today. And just like my Grand Sport, this also has an auto mode, but it's rubbish. No, it isn't. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> and it probably wears the clutch out quicker. So look, if you've got a robotized manual, you just use the paddles. You drive it like a manual, but with the paddles. All right, do you want to see how fast this car goes though, girls? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we are coming up to a national speed limit here. <coughs> so I'll tell you what, look, let's drop it down. Ready, three, two, one. I can't drive it too fast, girls, because the traction control light did flash on there. So, I mean, that was, well, I don't know, what, about 40% throttle input? So that gives you an indication of just how greasy and wet it is out here today. But I picked this car up yesterday. James, the owner of this car, very kind, has let me borrow this for four days. And yesterday when I drove it home on my own, on some motorways and dual carriageways, let me tell you, the performance is ample, the torque that you feel from this mighty V12. Oh, it's an absolute, complete delight. But what's it like sat in here as the driver? Well, look, this is one of my favorite things about Ferraris. They just know how to do special, special, special interiors. And this 612 has an incredible interior i mentioned already how much i love this dark red i think it might even be a burgundy but it's actually advantageous having black leather on the top of your dash here so that you don't get too much reflection on the windscreen and just even little things like the fact that the black section is contrast stitched in blue while in other branches you don't have to poke and prod too long before you find some cheap sort of door cards or something else in a ferrari i mean look these door cards are beautiful i even love in here how the driver's side door card is not symmetrical with the passenger side one. The passenger side one's got a handle there because obviously you as the driver are holding on to the steering wheel, but when you go fast in this torquey V12, your passenger might want to hold on to something. But speaking of non-symmetrical, there is one big grumble for me about the 612, and that unfortunately is the instrument cluster. Look, I'm not the biggest fan of dash screens anyway, but look, the problem here is that Obviously they were experimenting with screens on the dash and then they put a whopping great big one there on the left and so nothing symmetrical. And I don't think I would mind too much if that central rev gauge was sort of central to the steering wheel and central to the whole cluster, but it's not. It's offset and pushed over to the right because of that blooming screen. But fortunately, I think the steering wheel in this car more than makes up for the frustrations with the dash. This is an absolute delight to hold in your hand and to look at as well. Look, aluminium steering wheel with the buttons on there, like the sport button on the steering wheel. I really wish my Maserati had the sport button on the steering wheel, it just makes more sense. But yeah, this steering wheel for me, mwah. I love that James has kept the OEM feel in this car, even retaining the original CD player here, look. So it's all sounding fantastic, special, and wonderful. But what about the running costs? Come on, Ben. Surely a V12 Ferrari like this, that's 17 years old, is gonna bankrupt you. How many miles per gallon will you get from this big near 1900 kilogram V12 Ferrari? Um, miles per gallon, uh, yes. Yeah, you will get some miles per gallon. But interestingly, nobody knows what the miles per gallon is from a Ferrari like this. That's because even when you click through the display modes and you look on that screen on the left, yeah, it doesn't tell you. <laughs> Ferrari did think it was important to let you know what miles per gallon you're getting. Fortunately, this does come with a massive fuel tank, 110 liters, I believe. But I'll tell you what I'll do, as I've got this car for four days, I will try and calculate the miles per gallon. And then at the end of this video, I'll insert a clip where I tell you what miles per gallon I got during my experience with this car. What about servicing costs? Well, I think from a really good independent, it costs around 700 pounds for most of your services. I asked James, the owner of this car, how much he's spent in servicing and maintenance 
over his five years of ownership. And he counted up all of his invoices, paperwork and everything, and told me that it's around 17,000 pounds. And that includes the tracker and the subscription to the tracker that's fitted on this car as well. Now, initially that might sound like a lot. However, it's actually not really. No, averages out around three and a half thousand pounds per year, which is about the same as what I paid annually over the two years having my V12 Aston Martin. There will be some bigger ticket items with a Scaglietti. For example, these will need cam belt changes at around £2,000. Also, obviously, with this robotized manual, at some point, you will need to replace your clutch, although apparently they do last a long time. And the cost of replacing the clutch is probably more than likely about £5,000. So certainly the man maths in my head is saying that this actually won't be terrible to run and maintain. Certainly because if I bought a 612, I would take it to a specialist as opposed to Ferrari themselves. Daddy? Yeah? Would you like it if you always went on dad cars about children or uh, with your children? Would I like it if I only did drag cars on my own or with my children? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, which one's better? I prefer doing it with you in the back, girls. Oh. That's why, I, that's literally why I started this new job, is because I wanted to do a job that I could be around at home, editing and things, and pick you up from school and stuff, and I could spend time with you doing things like this. Oh. What do you think, is that nice? Because look, you girls, you're growing too fast. You are growing far too fast and look what we do, we're making memories today aren't we? This is the second time for both of you that you've been in a Ferrari. Oh yeah, because Pickle, you've been in a Ferrari as well. Whose Ferrari have you been in? JM's, JM's Ferrari. What colour was that? Red. It was a red one. It was his Ferrari F12. That was the first time Daddy ever drove a Ferrari and I had you with me. See? So that's, yeah, to me, that's everything. If I could actually turn this into a career as well, then that's incredible. And that's only gonna happen if people subscribe, by the way. <laughs> that was not planned. She just came out with that, by the way. So what is this like to drive compared to a DB9, a Gran Turismo, a Ferrari FF? Well, if you imagine a sliding scale of suspension and dampening and ride quality, and on one end, you could have a, a Lotus Elise, and the other, you could have a Rolls Royce. I would say that the 612 is certainly a lot closer to the Rolls Royce than, say, a DB9. It definitely feels like Ferrari's aim with this car wasn't to make a four-seater sports car. I think their aim was to make an elegant, comfortable continent crusher. With that in mind, I can see why people are quick to criticise the gearbox because, you know, robotised manual is not the easiest thing to live with day to day. Trust me, I've been living with the Grand Sport for the last four months. So whilst you do lose some of the effortless hop in the car, arrive at your destination without thinking too much about the driving that you would get in a ZF torque converter, having this F1 system, which is a lot more engaging, it forces you to have to think about your gear changes, think about what gear you are in. And Look, I guess the thing is, when you're in a Ferrari, it should always be an event. You should always be focusing on the driving and present in the moment. And this gearbox does just that. Anytime your attention wanders, it forces you to pull back in and focus on the present. The downshifts are notably, notably faster than the Grand Sport. You know, you can click it two, three times and boom, it takes it instantly down to the gear you want. miserable day to be driving a V12 Ferrari. Oh, this is not nice, is it, girls? So a Gran Turismo is one of the greatest dad cars that are featured on the channel. The Ferrari FF is the dad car king. It is my dream car, but having spent a couple of days with the 612, if you were considering those three cars, 
what would I recommend? Well, look, before I tell you that, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to this car's owner, James. Oh, and a really quick story as well. So he is a dad himself. He used to live in Spain and he went to his local performance and prestige dealership wanting to buy a Jaguar XKR, having recently driven one with his dad on a track day. But when his 13 year old daughter tried to fit in the back of the Jag, as we know on this channel, those Jags unfortunately don't have a lot of space in the back. He knew that it wasn't gonna happen. He then tried a 911, same problem. Tried a DB9, same problem. He then sat in a 456 and whilst there was more space in the back, James felt that the 456 was very old and dated feeling on the inside. He then sat in a 612 Scaglietti and the rest, as they say, is history. The car he had in Spain was black over bright red interior. Gorgeous car. And then when he moved back to the UK, the hunt began for a right-hand drive 612 and that's how he ended up with this car five years ago. And I believe he is thinking about selling this car this year. I met James at Petrol Hedonism in Nebworth, lovely guy. And what he does actually is race car experiences. It's a fantastic service where from as little as 170 pounds, I think, you can basically turn up at a racetrack and race car experiences will have everything in place for you on the day. A race car, trained race drivers to sit on the passenger side and give you tuition. And this is something which I look forward to going and doing myself because look, on this channel, all I do is drive these incredible performance cars, but with my children in the back. So obviously we never really drive that fast. Whereas it'd be nice actually on my own to go off, do one of these track days in a race car, just everything in place. So yeah, hopefully I'll be going and doing that at some point myself. Oh, and just for the record, not once has James asked me to say any of this stuff, but I just think it's really cool what he does. But okay, come on, verdict time. First, comparison to Dakar's favorite, the Gran Turismo. Because you could, for half the price of one of these, you could get yourself an incredible Gran Turismo. And whilst the Gran Turismo is only a V8, that is my favorite V8 that I've ever driven. And the sound of the, the Maserati, God, it really holds its own against this V12. So I don't actually think that a 35,000 pound Gran Turismo is half the dad car that this is. But the problem with the Gran Turismo is I reckon it could cost you as much to run certainly an MC shift Gran Turismo as this car. Then add to that the fact that they only made 3,000 of these 612 Scaglietti's. So that's why I think these still stand strong as a a special experience that definitely warrants the extra money. <laughs> While we're stuck in traffic here, we're losing light. Hopefully you can still see me. You know, what is this like compared to the FF? You know, would I have one of these, save the money over buying an FF? Well, no, I wouldn't. The FF is still my dream car. Honestly, it's crazy to me that these were made right up until 2011, right up until they started production of the FF because the 612 and the FF, they feel worlds apart, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, this is probably the best example of the term modern classic that I've ever experienced because it feels modern enough in construction. You know, the size of this, like the, I imagine the crumple zones, like the safety of this, you know, I'd feel very happy putting loads of miles on a 612 with my children in the back, but I wouldn't feel as comfortable doing that in say a Mondial. And the overall fit and finish, particularly here on the inside, or oh, it still feels like a nice modern place to be, but the actual sort of spirit of this car, you know, obviously I think the gearbox helps that as well, but just the feel of this car, it's much more of a classic Ferrari experience, whilst the FF is just ferocious. You know, in fact, the FF I think can do the refined, comfortable GT thing slightly better than this, but also it's got that ferocious side as well, you know, where <laughs> when you're on a blast in the FF, you know, you forget you've got rear seats behind you. Whereas in this car, I don't think you will ever forget that you've got rear seats behind. You know, you do feel that this is a heavy car. But as petrol head parents are very fortunate to have the choice of these two cars. You know, both modern enough to feel safe to use with your family today, 
the 612 and the FF. And depending on what kind of experience, what kind of use case you have for the car, you know, you can, you can pick and choose. You know, the FF is, is, a, is a very different experience, very modern. You know, this, if you want a classic, analog, engaging experience, this is just so delightful. Right, girls, listen to this when we go under this tunnel. You ready? Watch this. <laughs> oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? And do you know what? In actual fact, if I had enough money to buy a good example of a 612 in a, in a lovely spec like this, or I could wait another couple of years while I continue to save up and then buy an FF, I would in a heartbeat buy one of these and make a couple of years worth of memories with my children while they're young because they, they, they don't wait. They don't wait for you to save up and buy your dream car so that you can make memories with them when they're little. They will just continue to grow. So yeah, look, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in the future I owned a 612, but it does not replace the FF as my dream car. And as promised, here are the real world miles per gallon figures that I got with my time with this car. So over four days, I did 255.8 miles, drinking 83.96 liters of delicious super unleaded, which comes out at 13.85 miles per gallon. But as you saw in this video, a lot of the miles I did were city driving, stop start traffic. So 14 miles per gallon out of this glorious Ferrari V12, it's worth every single penny. If I had to describe the FF and the 612, both in one word each, I would use the word ferocious for the FF and majestic for the 612. And if you're still watching this video now and you haven't subscribed to this channel, come on, you're the person that I want to subscribe to this channel people who watch the videos. You've obviously enjoyed it if you've got this far. So just take the two seconds to click the subscribe button. Massive thank you once again to James for lending me this car for four days. I've missed loads of stuff that I wanted to say about this car. So I'm gonna try and film another video with it tomorrow where I pick up on everything else. And if you haven't seen the video where I drive a Ferrari F12 with my daughter, check it out now. Honestly, that one to me was such a big one. And I hope to see you soon. Take care, bye-bye. Say bye-bye, girls. Bye. Bye.